Hey everyone, welcome to episode 10 of the Tech Careers Podcast. Today I have a special guest and it's someone who was a pro athlete, now is a cloud engineer. And over the years, they've held different roles within tech, like tech sales rep, project and event manager, and now cloud engineer. Please welcome today's guest, Ifani. Hey, what's up? It's Ifani Otonye. Uh, I'm a cloud engineer, work at Security Blue Team, SPT for short. Um, I have transitioned from being a professional athlete to the world of cloud and, um, things I love to do. I just love to travel, love to experience new things. I love to meet new people, interact. I've traveled a lot as a professional athlete, going to so many different, uh, countries, islands, all over the place where I've gone to about six continents out of the seven. So I've pretty seen a lot of places in the world, right? interact with many different pieces of peoples and cultures. And some of my favorite things to eat is, uh, I love Korean barbecue and I love Jamaican nice. drunk chicken. So <laughs> that's, that's basically me. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm, I'm glad we can finally do this. Um, yeah. I know we, yeah, we did chat like a month ago, right? Yeah. We did, chat a month did. ago. Um, it was great to have that face to face time, even though it's not in person, but I mm -hmm. think we, yeah, I've been, I've been seeing your journey. You, you post consistently on Twitter and LinkedIn. I think I've been, I, I can't tell the time frame, but I've been, I've been following your journey and it's, it's quite, <laughs> yeah, it's quite a journey you had. Right. And the, the one thing that I see is like, I'll say it, that it's your strength i see it as strength in you is the discipline mm -hmm. and the consistency mm -hmm. that you have it's like it's i i see a post from you every day that's like very well formatted mm -hmm. um it provides value to the reader and you just do it consistently every day and i'm like i don't know how you do that yeah. but but it's crazy, you. Yeah. 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 Appreciate it, man. yeah well it's great to have you on the podcast. You know, I just wanted to get to know you a bit better. I think I already know you to a certain mm -hmm. extent, as in not know you personally, but Ooh. like your journey and the background you have had. Um, I, I think I want to share that story with, with the audience here. Like, and as you said in the intro, you know, you tra basically transitioned from being a pro athlete to a cloud engineer now. So mm -hmm. let, let's go a little bit bad than that, right? Like mm -hmm. when you were in high school or middle school, like was there an interest in IT or computers for you back then or not at all? <laughs> Could yeah. be either way. <laughs> um, I would, uh, let me say, as a young kid, a young child, high school, primary school, I was uh, the one who was always doing a lot of stuff, right? I mm. was putting my hands into BMX riding, free running, trying to play the piano, going out with my friends. Like I just, everything I was doing, skateboarding. And like, I always wanted to either push myself to do something that either I don't other see other people doing or something I'm interested in. I wouldn't be scared to like go into it. And obviously I love gaming growing up, right? PSP is still one of my favorite consoles ever. Like I think the PSP was like ahead of its time. I think if that came out now, Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. That would be crazy. <laughs> but my interest in technology came around the time PSP came out. And there was a lot of opportunity to mod, modify your PlayStation, your PSP. So you mm -hmm. could either open it up and then like change the top. I used to have like a red one and a white back. And then you could actually change and um, break, jailbreak the actual firmware. And then you oh, could. Um, okay. Yeah, and then you can download like other games on it and you could play emulators on it. And like, that's where I got into just being interested in technology. Yeah, that time. how it works and how you can move around it, I guess. Asking me to modify the PSPs and I started getting like asking for payment. So it then became like a certain, then it was just fun, right? I just loved it. But then was when I knew that, okay, this, this is pretty cool. Like I like this technical um, exposure to like what this thing is. Even back then, I didn't really know what I was doing. I just knew mm -hmm. that I like putting stuff together and changing it and modding it. And that was fun to me. So <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, I think it seems familiar because that's how me and my younger sibling were. We, we didn't have a PSP, but um, we, we just bought our PS2 back then. And um, the, you, 
basically the back in India, you couldn't afford buying a new game every time. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the yeah. going to the store and buying a CD. Yeah. And we discovered that it can be modded, but internet was not accessible back <laughs> in India. Yeah. So we found it from a friend and he's like, I know this dude who can do this for you and he can teach you. And I'm like, okay. And then we went to a third place. So he yeah. started showing us. So it, that is when, like, I think for me, it started making things click like, oh, this is super interesting on, you know, how all of this works. Mm -hmm. It started making sense. And, you know, that, that's great to hear that uh, you, you kind of had a similar, you know, moments yeah. that are like caught our interest uh, mm -hmm. specifically in technology. Um, well, yeah, I, I have never had a PSP, but I have heard good things. Oh, man. Man, I would buy a PS if they still had games. I would buy a PSP now. I like play it. It was so good. Like I do love this. <laughs> yeah, what year was it? It's like because like now I feel like remote mm -hmm. consoles, like you know, portable consoles are a yeah. thing. Yeah. But like you said, PSP was way ahead of its time because it yes. it did it, it back then, right? Back then, I think it was in. Prevalent, prevalent years was like when I was in Fort. Like we do forms in, in the Caribbean. Um, I think I was like around fifteen, fourteen years old. So maybe that was like two thousand nine, two thousand eight oh. time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Long time ago. Cool. Awesome. With this interest, you went through high school and like I want to know. So, did you mm -hmm. work any jobs specifically in IT before? going to formal education or was your first tech job after your you know degree yeah and also you can uh, you can tell about um what education you pursued yeah so no not really because like i said i was jumping around doing a bunch of stuff because that's just the type of kid i was I couldn't really <laughs> focus on one thing i just <laughs> loved many different things so that time when i was doing that psp stuff it wasn't me saying am hey, like this tech stuff is something i'm like do in the future. It was just me finding something else fun mm. to do. And then I would just pivot and do something else. Right. But I know I did have like an interest in it, but it never clicked that I might do this later. So, um, when I eventually did go to school in Kansas, uh, USA, Kansas state university, I remember my first, uh, when, when I went there, my, my major was electrical engineering. Right. And you can ask me now, like, why did I do that? I didn't really know. It just sounded cool. Mm. And I was like, electrical engineer, they make money, right? I didn't even do research. It just sounded like yeah, I'm an engineer, electrical, every house needs electricity. I might make some money. First semester was horrific. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> I did an intro to electrical engineering course and I hated it. And um, then was like after that, because it was my first semester, I... Um, was thinking of, okay, I need to get out of this major. And then that's when I was like, okay, I'm Nigerian parents, by the way. And the only things you can be to be successful in life is either lawyer, uh, engineer, or doctor, right? So I was like, okay, I can't just take any regular major because they're going to be like, what are you doing? I thought you were an electrical engineer. So I did, so I did, I moved into something I was interested in, which I did remember back where I loved gaming and just, understanding how things work so and i also didn't want to necessarily go into computer science because it was too much math too much other stuff so after talking to my advisor we moved into something called information systems which was more on the business side but i still did some exposure to like it courses and stuff mm -hmm. like that and um but at that point i wasn't even really interested in school academics because at that point was when i was in uh, college and yeah. I was a student athlete. And to me, I was like, I'm going to go pro. Like that was the only thing on my mind. Like I'm going to go pro. I'm just making sure that the major I'm doing is good enough for my parents <laughs> that they're not thinking I'm just not doing like a regular major just to waste time. Mm -hmm. So I did that. And that's when I got, I guess, real deep exposure into tech doing that major. Nice. Nice. It's interesting. It's, it's pretty. It's pretty similar in, in, in brown, like, or 
Indian culture too, like they only mm. consider doctor engineers and you know lawyers as successful career paths until unless yeah. you like have your own business or something. Mm -hmm. Um interesting. So you you had like that check mark <laughs> kind of yeah. feel by going the information systems route and then still pursuing or you discovered this in, in, in college that you want to be a pro athlete, right? Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I didn't think it was possible. I didn't think it was it was something that well not even think I didn't even think about it because like where where I grew up in, in Turks and Caicos in the Caribbean, um, we didn't have any professional athletes that competed at any high level, right? The only thing we saw was watching um, sports on TV based off of USA, right? NBA, NFL, that stuff was just like a dream, right? Oh, this is cool to watch. But then um, it wasn't until I left Turks and Caicos and moved to Jamaica, mm -hmm. which is the capital of track and feel like in the world, like the best yeah. sprinters come from there. So when I went there, that's when my athletic abilities like exponentially got better. And I was only there for two years. And while I was there was when I got recruited to go to Kansas State University in uh -huh. USA. And that's when I actually started thinking, man, if they're going to take me to USA where they have the best resources, the, mm -hmm. the stadiums, the, you know, the gyms and the coaches, everybody's like on a different level maybe I could actually like see myself being a professional athlete if I mm. put my all into the four years of like representing the school. Like that was the only time I actually thought like this was something in the future. Nice. That's one thing um, I feel like I can r resonate to, to your story a little bit. I won't say completely because you know, we have different experiences, different opportunities that show up. Um, but would you say there is a huge amount of change in the opportunities you have in the Western society compared to if you're in a developing country? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's, it's insane. It's like <laughs> you get over there, you realize, cause I was an international athlete, which yeah. is like a whole, a whole international student first before an athlete, which is a whole other discussion, but like even what was possible as an international as an international student in the USA was like so much that I didn't even think was possible. And like when I look back to Turks and Caicos, there's there just fundamental things that we didn't have available to us. And when I came to USA, I was like, man, this you guys have all this stuff at your fingertips. Like you can just yeah. drive to like over here. It was mind blowing. And coming from the like the Caribbean which is a developing country and going into that, like you really start believing that anything is possible once you enter that environment, like, yo, I can do anything here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I felt the same, <laughs> but I'm so like, that's why I think I, I try to go back home, you know, to see my family and stuff mm -hmm. and, and, you know, stay in touch to my roots. Um, but it, it all, it is also a reminder that all of the stuff that I have now is kind of a luxury. Yeah. It, it, things that we have now are like, okay. And in, in, in Canada, they're considered necessities, but it, it's luxury coming from the countries we have come exactly. from. Yeah. And I need to remember that for, for, <laughs> for, for that spark, you know, inside yeah. of me to just yeah. pursue what I think can be done with these, yeah. with these possibilities and opportunities. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. You did your bachelor's in information systems mm -hmm. and you also are pursuing, you are a pro athlete, right? Yeah. So like, but for the four years you you were, I'm guessing you were giving your hundred percent or 150% in, in whatever sport you were doing, mm -hmm. but, um, the education also went on, right? Mm -hmm. Did it ever occur to you, occur to you in those four years that you don't want to be an athlete and want to be pursuing something in tech. I think during that time, I was with the trajectory I was going as far as your first year, second year, and what I was doing in in the country as far as because our sport is track and field. By my junior year, I was ranked number two international athlete in the entire USA, and this is Division One. This is the highest level, right? So I went to like the national championships and I came like top ten twice. So at that point, I kind of knew that 
okay, when I get out of, when I graduate, I should be able to go pro, right? Because I'm the, one of the best in the country. And um, I'm one of the best international talents in my event. So at that point, I still wasn't like focusing so much on academics or what I was doing in my degree, but I still knew in the back of my head that when I do go pro or when eventually I retire, I can always lean back on this because it's a well, it's still a STEM major where you'd be able to get some type of job or role or something. So to me, I was like, okay, this is going to be um, like uh, something I can sit back on after my career. But I was still pushing so much on, I'm going to be a professional athlete. Like I put so much into that. Like it's crazy. Like for school, I would, like I'll go to class and I'll watch what needs to be done. And I'll say, okay, I just need to do the bare minimum to make sure mm -hmm. I get a B or a C, right? <laughs> to make sure I can one, continue to compete for the school because I know where yeah. I'm going. And I just needed to like make sure my GPA is well, at least good enough to, you know, to stay and continue to compete for the school. And then afterwards, I knew if I had to lean back on that degree, they won't really ask for my GPA at that time. Like mm -hmm. in my trap career so <laughs> <laughs> interesting so yeah you were all in to be an athlete you were one of the best in 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 the entire usa like what changed later for you to be a cloud engineer today i know it will be it can be a long journey so i'll yeah. let you take your time uh, i also know you went ahead and did your you did mba right yeah, yeah. so like I know there's a lot of gap from being from graduating from your bachelor's to uh, the present time. When I graduated, um, that was during the Olympic year. I think the Olympics mm. was the next year, actually. Okay. And I'd done so much for the school, right? I competed, went to conference, got so much points, and you know, put basically helped put the school on the map. Yeah. So at the end of my degree, my bachelor's degree, I had a capstone project, capstone course that I had to do. And mm -hmm. basically you had to work with an external organization. And what I did was basically work with the sports department in the IT um, department, like this IT support basically. And I just did it to fulfill the course, right? And at the end, uh, when I was graduating and I finished, you know, working with the department, um, I was thinking, okay, if I go back home, because I'm an international athlete, once you finish your degree, unless you go to work, you have to, you know, either go back home, right? So I wanted to extend my time in USA to continue to train on the highest level, get access to um, yeah. all the stuff I was having so I can prepare for the Olympics, right? So I brought, it's crazy, I brought that proposal to the athletic director. I sent this guy an email, basically saying, hey, you know, I've been here for four years. I'm going to do my master's degree, but I have no way to pay for it. I want to continue training to go to Olympics and use all the resources that's here. Crazy miracle, yo. I, I still today, I don't even know how it happened. But basically, like a week after, he messaged me back and they basically said, okay, because of what you've done for the school, because of your dreams and your aspirations and what you're trying to accomplish, we're going to pay for your master's degree and you can still like work in the IT support as you were doing in your, for your course, right? Yeah. And yeah, so I basically got my entire MBA paid for by the school and I was able to work as an IT support and also get like money from that. <laughs> okay. 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 So you worked on a project, the capstone mm -hmm. project for your for your degree with the with the IT team or with the IT department at the same university, right? Yeah. And the That's sports how you department. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Specifically yeah. sports department. Yeah. And then your idea was to do masters or MBA because your student visa was gonna expire, like because you're graduating, yeah. your student experience or visa is gonna expire and you have to go back. Mm -hmm. You sent a proposal saying that, hey, yeah, I want to stay here. Uh, I still want to train. I'll do the best what I can, what I've been doing for four years. Yeah, but I can't pay for my masters. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not only they agreed to pay for your masters, but they like work on the IT team, so you were earning a salary. Yes. You were doing your MBA for free, but were you training. also training as an, okay. And I still was training. That is insane, dude. Insane. That is insane. <laughs> like when it happened, like I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, yo, and like, I didn't mm -hmm. never had to stop because I finished December of 2016 
Mm. And by the time you told me that I could continue 2017, I just jumped straight into my miles. And so it wasn't even like a break. So I was able to continue training, um, access to everything in the athletic department. Uh, but even, yeah, but and then that time, during that time is when I signed uh, with Nike. I had a contract. And so basically I was a professional athlete and I was doing my master's and I was working <laughs> part-time, <laughs> right? So a lot of that stuff lined up like that. And during that time, people asked me, a lot of people was asking me, how the heck are you doing this? Yeah. Like, doing the master's, you're working and you're training at a high level. It was just something that was that had built over the years because even as an a undergrad, I was doing the same thing kind of right so it just gradually increased it wasn't something like you just wake up and say hey i can manage all this in one day and oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you you build up to to it. Do yeah nice nice i also think it's the mindset i think the the mindset that you were given this opportunity which people see now but you being able to grab that i think you know i i feel that i i might mm-hmm. be wrong I, i don't know how you felt about it at that time is like you feel that not privilege, but like a respect towards the opportunity that came mm-hmm. to you, which others dream of, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you just gotta respect that yeah. the ability that you have to do this master degree for free, mm-hmm. the ability to work in the IT department, so you're earning a salary part time, and also train as an athlete that you always want to do. So I think yeah. I think that the respect for your dreams kind of you know pushes you to the limits that might surprise people, I think. Yeah, no, I, I believe it. Um, I'm someone that's very, uh, I'm extremely, like, if it's something I'm passionate about, I'm extremely driven. Like, I can go to the ends of the earth, earth to make sure, like, it happens. So at least try to do all I can it shows. To, to make it, shows. it happen. <laughs> so, like, and I'm very, very strategic. I'm always thinking six months like a year ahead, which is something that now I to like focus more on like now and what's going on now. But even, I, even when I remember when I was doing the capstone mm-hmm. in my head, I was, I was using it as like an internship, right? <laughs> like yeah, I was yeah, thinking yeah. so far ahead. Like I was using it as, listen, if I do a good job here in this capstone project, because I was helping them with so much mm. that when it was time for me to leave, they couldn't go back to having to do all that stuff that I was doing. Because before they were doing it, was only two of them in the department. When I came yeah. and I alleviated like a lot of their very low level rudimental stuff that they were doing, and I removed that burden, but I did it very well. So I knew that for them to lose me, they're not gonna wanna <laughs> do this <Yeah>. over. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, like, because I think people call it leverage Mm. And I think it has like a negative side to that word, Yeah, but it works it, 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 yeah. at the end of the day. It's like you came in and you provided value, which cannot be taken away exactly. from you. So they, they'll have to hire you. Yeah. That's what I keep telling. <laughs> like, so for me, I did have the opportunity to do an internship, even if it was two year diploma, which is awesome, mm-hmm. but it was not paid. So, you know, everyone treated it like as a project. So yeah. it was, they call it co-ops. And since it was not paid, this company was not used to having students actually do some IT work. Um, because I know, like my supervisor would tell me during that two month co-op, some days he would be like, oh, do you have any assignments or, you know, college work that you want to do? And I'm like, no, mm-hmm. like assign me Jira tickets. I want to, want to do stuff. Um, yeah. And that just shows like the, the, the value you want that you want to work and the value you bring. Mm-hmm. Um, and they hired me full time after that. So wow. I, I can relate to that. Um, it's, it's the leverage it's mm-hmm. <laughs> that, <laughs> but you have to show that you are, you're actually yeah. bringing value. Right? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So what, what happened next? I'm, now I'm interested, um, after, so the MBA was two years, right? Yeah. Two years. Okay. Two years. So you spent two years. I'm guessing you you also spent two years working part time for the IT department. Uh, yeah. You also kept training for two years. What what mm-hmm. happened next? Basically, almost the same thing. After that, I was still trying to prolong my time in USA to yep. continue to train. So um, you do have an option. Uh, once you graduate, you can do something called OPT, which is optional practitioner training, where you can mm-hmm. work for a year. Right, you can work for a year. As a, as a student, uh, as an international student, right? 
but you're not in school anymore, but you get that one year. Okay. Um, yeah. So during that time, I was able to land a part-time role with, a, uh, it was a Xerox company, basically. What they originally did was they sold tech, um, tech stuff, mainly copiers and printers. Yeah. And even the way how I got this job was, was insane. So like <laughs> the sports department was a client to this okay. organization. And one day, the a guy who represents the company came in and he was like, oh, where's your manager? I was like, oh, my manager isn't here today. He went up and then my other coworker wasn't there. So it was only me. So I was I basically took the initiative because he had to go to every single printer and copier in the entire department of over 200 people. So I had to take him to every room, every closet, and he had to like take information from the printer. So I got to like really interact with him, communicate. Mm. And I didn't know this entire time. It took two days. This entire time, this guy was basically watching everything I did. He watched how people interacted with me when I entered the room. And I was just, you know, helping him around. And then yeah. like at the end of the two days, the guy, guy said, hey, here, here's my number. And he's like, how much do they pay you? I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, uh, they pay me this much. He was like, listen, whenever you're ready for anything new, uh, just let me know, like, you have a job here. And then I started talking with him. I was like, why? Like, why did you, like, what happened? He's like, did you, like, I know you don't know, but I was like, like, observing, yeah. every, observing you, everything you were doing and the way how people interact with you. And he was saying that, you know, you're very genuine and the way how people respond to you is like they respect what you do and who you are because of past relationship and connections and interacting with them and my interactions with him. Also, he was asking me a bunch of questions like, like, what do you regret in life? I was like, what the heck is going on? And we just having a <laughs> conversation, but he was asking me stuff like, do you regret anything in life? He was asking me about my past in the Caribbean, my parents, and we were just having a conversation. It turned out that basically I was maybe like two months before I graduated. And I never really took him up on it, but I just know, oh, that's cool. We had, we had a good conversation. Mm -hmm. Come to find out later on, like when I was about to graduate and need an opportunity, like I messaged him and the guy was the CEO of the company. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? That's who I was interacting with. I didn't know. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, like he, so I was asking him, like, why did you come on? He was like, he likes also the personable part of his company of like being able to interact with people. And he got nice. a response from me. That's how I got that job. When I came in, it was a bunch of, like, it was a bunch of older folks, like 50 and up. Like okay. Seven of them who was in the company selling copiers and, and doing stuff. So when I came in, he kind of just gave me the reins and said, You're younger, you can try things, do things, build things, try different stuff in the department. And so what I did is because they were just selling copiers and stuff, I um, tried my hand on sales, which is rough, man. <laughs> sales jobs, tech sales is hard, man. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> but what I did was like, I pivoted and said, okay, we're going to offer IT support to our clients also, especially okay. the, small, the small organizations who don't necessarily have a, like an IT team, Yeah, you know, either uh, like a lawyer, like the lawyers, um, like small banks and stuff like that, um, which had like maybe an IT team, but they needed assistance or something for like small things like we would offer that to them. So when I came in to different organizations, I would like ask them different questions. And then I would start like getting our really existing clients to be their IT support and different stuff. So that's what I did, which was fun to me. And every now and then I was still going on sales calls, which I freaking hated, man. <laughs> that stuff was brutal, man. <laughs> People are like, like, what are you doing here? No soliciting. <laughs> like, I still got to come in. I got to try. I got to try. Spot oh, on my man. job. I hated that part, dude. Hated it. But, um, but it was fun. It was basically a 20 some year old with like seven other, working with seven other people who all were over 50 years old. And you would, it's crazy because you would think because of the age group, age gap, mm -hmm. that you won't be able to maybe talk about stuff. But we, we bonded so good. Like <laughs> this young cat with like five 50 year old dudes every single day walking around. People used to be like, what does this dude do with these, with these guys? We used to walk in the street, moving <laughs> copiers, and he'd be like, yo, it was so weird. People used to look like, what's this dude doing now? But <laughs> it was a cool dynamic, right? 
Yeah, it was, yeah. It was fun. I won't say it was fun. And the guy was very accommodative to me, my dreams mm-hmm. as an athlete. So, because I was working part time, like three p.m. was when I was supposed to start work, and sometimes I'd be there like three twenty, three thirty. The dude would come in and be like, "What are you still doing here? Get up, go and train." And I used to respect that so much. I'm like, man, this guy's a great boss. <laughs> That's one thing I've realized now after talking to so many f- folks and in the industry is. Like that's one thing that your luck might play a huge part yeah. is having a supportive manager or a boss yeah. is just something I didn't realize it's an issue until like, you know, people <laughs> would tell me horror stories and I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah, dude. What? I heard some stories that you like, man, what the heck? Like I've never really had that horrible yeah. <laughs> horrible of a boss before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's, that's, that's really interesting and fascinating to me that, you know, how, how your journey is kind of going up yeah. until now. Now I'm really interested <laughs> after yeah. doing printer sales and copier sales, like cloud and printer sales are so different things. So different. Even at that point, I didn't think tech was going to be my career. I was, I was, it was like I was using the tech. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. yeah to stay in USA so I could continue my dream to be a professional athlete. I was a professional athlete. What I was trying to do was, was medal at the Olympics, medal at world championships, mm-hmm. and see how far I can go for mm-hmm. me and for my country, you know? So, um, yeah. So I was always using something to leverage something else. And then after the one year, because you only have one year, you yeah. can file for something called H1B, which is a, a yeah. work, a work, permit to work in USA mm-hmm. and this was during COVID and this was during the time where the current administration was rejecting a lot of people, declining a lot of like international mm-hmm. applications because I remember that time, it was yeah. around the time when, you know, who was the power, <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> but it was, it was crazy dude. And basically the company filed for the H1B because I can't file for it myself. Yeah. The company files for it on behalf of me, basically got declined, right? And when it got declined, it's not like you got declined you're like, okay, you can try and find another job. You literally have 60 days to mm-hmm. find a job or you have to get out, right? And at that point, it was it was just too much, right? And mm-hmm. I tried many things within the first month and I realized that, you know, this is just too hard. I think yeah. it's just time for me. <laughs> like, let me go home, right? I didn't necessarily know what was next. There was nothing, was there anything I planned. It was very abrupt, you know, thinking, because each one be last three years. Yeah. And I, as I told you, I'm very strategic in thinking in the future. So in my mind, I'm like, once I get this h one B, I I have three years to continue to stay here and train. And when that happened, that cut like a lot of my plans out the blue. And I was with, uh, I'm now wife during that time. So we were planning stuff together. And that basically like it was a rift yeah. between two of us. You're separating, right? And many many people were telling me, dude, just get married like within two days and 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 then file for like green card. I was like, dude, I'm not I'm not going that route, bro. I'm not rushing mm-hmm. something. I I cherish and, and hold like marriage, the honor of marriage, like to a high standard. I'm not gonna rush anything just, just, just yeah. so I can no, I like no. So that's when I eventually came back home after basically eight years, seven to eight years in USA, right? Prominent years of growing up into a, a man, an adult, mm-hmm. my friends who have seen me grow. I came back home. I mean, obviously I've gone home over those years to yeah. vacation and stuff, but I came back home and everything was foreign because my friends were the people who I left and you yeah. would say those are like my real friends. Obviously I had a few back home, but like my real friends were the ones who I bonded with mm-hmm. growing up to mm-hmm. be an adult. So, uh, man, it was so, it was so weird coming back home. Um, but when I came back home, because I had all this international experience as a professional athlete working in the IT, uh, in the sports department. Yeah. where I was also a part of the events that we had every week, which is like football, mm-hmm. basketball. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're talking about 50,000 people come to these stadiums. So I got experience with that. So when I came back home, I had an opportunity to work with the National Sport Commission, which is basically governs all the different uh, 
sport, sporting bodies in Turks and Caicos, which is, you know, track and field, basketball, soccer, like all that stuff. Nice. So they, they felt like because I had all this international experience, they felt like I could bring that to Turks and Caicos and deploy it here. Now, I didn't necessarily have event management experience, but they just felt like because I've seen it, I can bring it to life here. Once they empower me to bring it to life, it's more possible that I can do it than someone locally because they haven't seen it like up front, you know? I've yeah. seen it yeah. all over the world. So <laughs> I really, at that point, I didn't even like believe in myself, but I just felt like this is a good opportunity for me to um, deploy what I've learned in mm. my own country. And I'm going to take it. It was a two year contract. I was basically a sports management, uh, sports events manager. Okay. Hosting events weekly and stuff like that. And it was during COVID. So when I came, the first project I had was to host the first event coming out of COVID. Oh my God. <laughs> and I was like, do you know how much project managers that have 10 to 20 years of experience and still do not know what to do with yeah. COVID? <laughs> and they put that on my shoulders. Like I had to listen. This is what also helps me be an engineer. I had to research all the sporting bodies in the world and how they were doing it. NBA, um, FIFA, I had to read their documentation, break it up, and make it fit to the situation that we were working mm -hmm. in this small developing country. <laughs> Man, we had, I mean, we had to like test like every day of each event, over like 300 kids. Oh my God, it was so much planning and logistics. It was, that was my first event. And yeah. I'm actually glad that was the first event because it was so hard. Everything else was just set the tone. Like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything was. But after, after a year of working as a sports events manager, also still training as a, as a um, <laughs> professional athlete, I got to realize quickly that, you know, sports, sports administration and being an athlete is completely do different things as far as yeah. what I like and what I want to do. So I knew after the first year, this is not what I want to do for the rest of my life. This is not going to be a career. Because to mm. me, I had a two-year contract. To me, I feel like once you stay at a place for more than two years, it becomes a career. <laughs> Makes so sense. I was like, so to me, I was like, listen, I need to, I need to figure out what's next after these two years. Cause I'm not trying to renew this contract. Cause mm -hmm. I don't want to be here and continue doing what I was doing. Because it was during that time was I think one of the hardest times of, of my life, right? Because um, as I was juggling so much when I was doing my master's degree, when mm -hmm. I came there, I was doing even more because yeah. um, if you know, if you Google right now, like it's one of the most stressful jobs in the world, top 10 event management will be like there, <laughs> right? It's so stressful. I mean, every weekend, if you know events are usually on the weekends, Friday, Saturday, yeah. Sunday. Every weekend, either I'm traveling to the next island or we're hosting events. And in the beginning of the weekend, we're preparing for the events. And this is year round, year mm -hmm. round. We were extremely understaffed. We were pulling miracles. Almost every event, we pulled a miracle. And you can only pull so much miracles before you start completely feeling stressed out, overwhelmed, and just overworked. And like it, really started to play um, a lot on me mental, mentally. Mm. But I forgot to mention that when I moved home, like four months after, I did get married, right? And then my wife from USA eventually moved down to Turks and Caicos. So she was with me. But what was happening was she would work from home, right? So okay. I would leave home at like 6 a.m. to go train, go practice. And then I will go to work at 9 o'clock. Around 5 o'clock, I have to go lift weights that's so two-time training and by the time i get home it's like seven right so she's home the entire day i come yeah. home by seven exhausted, exhausted yeah. right and the stress from work was coming into the house right and it was i knew that this is not sustainable this is not going to be good for my family or future and that's yeah. when I started really thinking of yeah like I need I need to I need to think of something else like this is this is not good um, and that's when, at that moment was when I started thinking, okay, I need to figure out a way out. 
mm-hmm. of where I'm at, the situation I'm in. From that moment, that was the why that helped me um, get to where I am right now, right? That and the realization that I knew that I was about to, uh, my time in athletics was about to come to a completion as far as me retiring. Cause I could tell that I was getting up in the ages and I'm about to retire soon. I need to think of what's next. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. all of that played into, yeah, I need to figure out something what's next. So um, during this time, I did like a matrix of figuring out what do I want in my next career? Okay. And it fell down into these three things was freedom, flexibility, and being able to sustain my life, my family, and my generation. Yeah. Eventually gonna have kids, right? So I was like, okay, I need something that that will be able to do that. Everything was pointed to tech. Every time I did research, tech would be able to give me these three things, right? At that point, I was like, man, I don't remember nothing from my practice degree, like nothing. I don't remember anything. Yep. <laughs> I was so far removed. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, I can't. so like that's when I decided to start on my own journey of figuring out what I'm going to do with tech. And at that point, I didn't, I didn't necessarily know I wanted to go into cloud. I just knew I wanted to go into tech. tech. So I decided to get certifications. I, I started out with the CompTIA trifecta, which is the A plus, network plus, and, sec- and security mm-hmm. plus. Because so I felt like the entire tech industry, the technical part of tech industry, that is the foundation of everything. Yes. <laughs> A plus, how computer components are put together, network plus, how they communicate, security is how you secure systems. Yep. But like, if I got exposure to these three things, I would get an understanding of where I want to go. So I got those certifications. But I tell you, my why was so strong the where I wanted to get out of the situation I was in. I got three of them in like four months. And it was, I didn't know how crazy it was until like I posted it. And people were like, dude, how the heck did you get the trifecta in like four months? Because mm-hmm. A plus, two exams, like, you have to take two exams to pass the yep. A plus. I, I, I just know that <laughs> I was studying like a maniac, like a maniac, like crazy. I was going ham, right? And you could say maybe I was just like, none of the stuff was really like seeping deep into my mind. I was just reading so much, reading so much. But it was during that time is where I developed the skill, taking in so much information in a short amount of time, mm. understanding it in a way to be able to regurgitate it and understand it and answer these questions, right? So that was me kind of building that skill, right? Yeah. And passed those three certifications. And it was during this time, like I said, is when I got introduced to the cloud. I didn't know what the cloud was, Mm -hmm. but studying for these, researching it, was when I realized um, cloud was booming. And I just needed to understand what the heck this cloud thing is. Because if Mm -hmm. you do the trifecta, the only thing you're exposed to is hardware, um, uh, you know, IT fundamentals, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. all that stuff with, you know, connectors and, and seven layer, OSI layer, like how the heck does cloud of being fit into all this? Cause all, everything I'm doing is hardware stuff. Mm-hmm. And so that intrigued me and, um, I didn't know how it worked. Cause remember I told you, like, I just love to know how things work. Yeah. So I was like, how is this thing working? Dove a little bit deeper into it. And I realized that certifications might be the best way for me to get exposure to what this thing really is. Mm -hmm. And that's when I decided to dive deep into cloud engineer. Nice. Nice. (laughs) It's awesome. But I think the important thing that worked out was your why. Mm -hmm. Um, I think your why led to whatever you did up until now not only getting a cloud engineering job, like if Mm -hmm. you look at, you know, moving as an international student to the States, yeah, your why was different then, but yeah, 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 yeah. I think the discipline, the the consistency, the urge to just go all in, it comes from like just the question why. So I think that's a great takeaway for the audience here is just sit down and ask yourself why, like don't fall for, you know, I think it, it it is really hard with social media right now because people are yeah. in these traps. Yeah. Take every bit of content that you see on social media as the glorified thing of what the reality is. Yeah. 
nobody will ever post about how they took down production. Uh, nobody will ever post that it took them three years to learn some technology. You'll see posts about how I did something in seven days or 10 yeah. days or 19 yeah. days. I, I did my cloud practitioner in three months and people were like, oh, that's a long time. <laughs> Like, yeah. Why does it matter? <laughs> it took me three months to, you know, click things into my brain. Yeah. yeah. And now, like, I took the develop DevOps professional without even studying. So, Dude, like, it doesn't I matter. I was like, oh my God. It, that's crazy. Yeah. But uh, th that's why I'm coming back to the point. Like, if your fundamentals are really strong, you understand the technology, mm -hmm. you have the hands on experience, you, you won't need as much effort. Um, like, yeah. like you said, you, you figured out doing that trifecta, how you learned and how mm -hmm. you, because learning itself, like you need to learn how you learn the best. Yes. Ways. Oh my gosh. Otherwise you would be wasting time on different Almost resources. <laughs> yeah. And that's why you like people go into this tutorial hell or whatever you want to call yeah. it, buying Udemy courses, because you, you haven't sat down and realized what works for you. For some, it might be documentation and books for some it mm -hmm. might be video courses for some it might be building stuff on their own yeah. um and for some it would be all three like yeah. you have to do bits <laughs> of this bits of this mm -hmm. but yeah i think it's it it is such an inspiring story and i'm glad i like could witness it and could <laughs> you know listen to it um yeah. from you and yeah i i just have mad respect for for the work ethic, the discipline you have, and just the overall, you know, journey and the like, the background you have had, it's it's such a unique perspective. Mm -hmm. um, the opportunities that not only presented, because I feel like opportunities are you bring them into existence. So like mm -hmm. I saw that I saw that effort from you, whether it be doing the MBA for free, um, mm -hmm. like. You know, there, there's one saying I'm trying to remember. It's something like, if you don't ask, you don't get fed or something. Oh, like oh my God, dude. <laughs> Listen, right? that's the exact quote, especially because, dude, before I sent an ax or requested to be paid for my master's degree, I took like two weeks to write that email. And I was talking to my friends. I'm like, man, should I send this? Like, should I send it? Like, should I really send it? And then one of them told me, Listen, if you don't ask, you're not gonna get basically closed mouth don't get fed. Ask. The only thing they can say is no. I said that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> now that it's now that's phenomenal. You realize that cloud certifications is the way to understand and break into cloud. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know you went down the rabbit hole of getting every cloud certification that's out there. Um that is one thing that we we share is the the, the <laughs> interest in collecting these badges <laughs> um like pokemons and not that i recommend it don't yeah. don't do it you don't need all of them don't waste that you know if, if if your company is paying for it sure go for it <laughs> but mm -hmm. don't pay it out of pocket um yeah. there are ways to you know manipulate the system to to get these badges but yeah they definitely teach you the skills and about the provider itself but again i think if you don't know the fundamentals it's not worth it so yeah in your case you since you went through the tire factor you kind of understood basically the broad it right you yeah. know networks yeah. you know it components you know security mm -hmm. um and now you're you're working as a cloud engineer um <laughs> Uh, the security blue team like how does it feel that you're finally there where, where you envisioned three four years mm -hmm. ago very sure it's a real man it's because when i was going through the process right it was always in the back of my mind <clears throat> that what you're trying to do is it's low-key impossible dude like like <laughs> when people would ask me how i would just tell them like, i don't know but i'm moving forward I didn't really have, I didn't know how it was going to happen. I didn't know what the goal was. I just had one mission. I'm going to be a cloud engineer, right? And I was going to try and do whatever I could, but there was a 
always in the back of my mind, like, yo, how the heck am I going to pull this off, right? But obviously, I didn't let it show. I would post about, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Um, but there's a sense there, there's a sense of delusion that you have to have. Should I say a healthy delusion, like, of faith and believing that everything around you doesn't show that you would, mm-hmm. but you're going to believe that some way, somehow, you will, right? And when I actually did, it was so crazy because, like, man, I can't believe it actually happened. Like I was going through it, but I still can't believe it actually happened. And there's a sense of proving yourself, right? Yeah. Like not necessarily for others, but because I knew like deep down, like I knew like, yo, somehow I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. And when it happened, it was like, man, I proved myself right. Because you believe it, but there's the other side of you is like, yo, this, this is crazy. There's some craziness that you're doing. So you're proving that crazy side. You were right, basically. <laughs> And no, yeah, so like, definitely. Just the way how I got it was was insane. But, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I remember a little story about this. Um, there's a temple in in, in back home in India, and it, I was I was little. I, I I just don't remember how old I was, but there were crazy amount of stairs. The only <laughs> way you could reach the top of the temple was stairs. There's nothing else. Yeah. And given how like religious my mom was, you know, or is the only option was to go through the stairs. Yeah. And I, I kept asking my dad, like, when will we reach? I'm like, because <laughs> if you look up, it's just yeah. stairs, like, and you could only tell once you you know reach the destination, like. Mm-hmm. But he's like, because I was, I I kept nagging him. He's like, listen, just keep taking the steps. We know how to reach the top, right? Just keep taking the steps. He was He's an engineer, so... Mm-hmm. <laughs> like the math is simple. We know the destination. We know how we have to reach it. Just keep taking the steps. Once you, you're you there, you'll see it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So oh, he scolded me, right? So I, I, I was quiet the entire... I don't know how many steps it was. So I just kept oh, going. Like, let's go, yeah. let's go, let's go. <laughs> and then finally I reached it. I'm like, oh... And the view was phenomenal, of course. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, um, and now I realize he he we were talking about this because we have pictures and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I have a trip coming. Um, I'm visiting my family in two weeks back hey, in India. Yeah. So nice. we were talking about this, and he's like, "Yeah, remember that? <laughs> That's a life lesson." We didn't realize. Yeah, that, but oh, like, wow. yeah. but it's I like. See. Once you know why, once you know how, you know your destination, and it could be as crazy as mm-hmm. it is. But if you keep taking the steps that are needed one at a time, you'll eventually reach there. If it's, you just don't know if it's five hundred steps or thousand steps. Yeah, exactly. Find out. Oh, good boy! It's a crazy life lesson right there. <laughs> yeah. Now I have got a few questions for you that oh, I want to know you better. As a tech mm-hmm. person now, since you're a cloud yeah. engineer, what are you most excited about? You know, looking at the the shift we have had this year with LLMs and AI taking over the entire yeah. industry. What what is one thing that you're most excited about that gets you going? Like, hey, you know, I can do this for the next. I can be in tech for the next twenty thirty years. Yeah, um, man, neat. Like, I love the sheer fact that. Things are just, well, tech in general, right? You just have to continue learning and things are just changing rapidly. But it's so crazy because that has always been part of tech, right? Things just automatically just improve, get more efficient, Mm -hmm. new tools, new stuff comes out. But in this day and age, things are even exponentially becoming, I mean, changing even more rapidly, right? I'm talking like every four months, every six months, the framework comes out. It's, <laughs> I don't know how people in JavaScript world are doing it. Like every time a new framework comes out. But to me, I think uh, AI and ML is huge for what I'm thinking about is productivity and efficiency. Because I'm looking at so far how I, how I have applied it uh, being a cloud engineer, right? I know um, people are always saying the whole world was talking about. Uh, ChatGPT and stuff when it first came out is going to take away a lot of jobs as engineers because they don't need it. But then it's crazy because ChatGPT is not something new as far as revolutionary, right? There's yeah. always been a point 
in the tech career that was something revolutionary that didn't necessarily take people's jobs away, but more of made them more efficient in doing what they already mm -hmm, did. Mm -hmm. And then eventually open up new jobs. So like for me, I'm more excited, like, okay, where, how far can we take machine learning to where I still be able to apply myself and whatever comes out of it to make myself more efficient and more effective. But like, I think, um, the world we're going to is going to be very, very automated, but it's kind of scary when it comes to consumption, especially yeah. with like social media. Oh my God, dude. We've already seen some very questionable, questionable things mm -hmm. on social media when it comes to AI and stuff like that. And uh, I don't know if you saw when they basically made an entire song using Drake's voice. Yeah. And it, yeah. That was sounded exactly like him and the song was and the good song was fire yeah the song <laughs> like, was fire. this is this Dude. could actually be a drake song and be on the billboard oh, right yeah. so like new regulations gonna come out we obviously know that like but yeah. i mean there's a good and a bad side to it but for me i'm excited about it you know it's a new world something we're gonna have to get used to i know maybe 20 years when I'm the old cat and my kids are growing up with their phones. They're going to have to be teaching me stuff, which mm. is so crazy. Like there's, there's even some stuff that's going on now, like on TikTok and stuff, like I can't keep up with, with the new generation. And I could tell that later on, even as being an engineer, you're going to see that the younger generation, because tech is going to be engraved in everything that they do, mm -hmm. they're going to be more exposed and more in, um, like engulfed into this life. Awesome. Awesome. You you mentioned a lot of great things, you know, that has happened to you in tech and like the, the, the consistent learning that you like. What is one one bad experience or you saw it as a challenge or you see that, okay, this needs to be changed in tech. What is one thing that you feel about that way? I know for me, like when I was getting into tech, there was... Well, right now, like you said earlier, right, they have a lot of people talking about how glamorous it is and people who are just coming into tech, they get hit with a lot of barriers and get hit with, oh, this is what it really is, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think, especially the way how it goes with like a lot of influencers in tech is that they need to be, show more of the real side of what technology is, right? How to get there, like. Right? you have to work hard. Like this isn't just easy work. This isn't just um, glamor and glitz and making a bunch of money. Like you said mm. earlier, you, can, you might have like a horrible manager and I don't end up, end up have to leave that job or like just showing the real side of it. Because I remember, um, I don't even think that many people talk about it when you, when you just land a job. There's just so much people are transitioning to this in three months, transitioning yep. to this in, in one year. But I remember when I, landed the job and I was like, I'm here. The first two days of the job, no one prepared me for that part, right? So when I got there, I was like, yo, like I literally had a thought of quitting, like seriously, right? Okay. Because when I got there the first two days and I was exposed to everything in production, the different, yeah. the code, the code, um, the, the scripts and the codes and whatever that it really had, the code bases, right? But I look back at how much I put in to get there and I realized that I'm basically starting from zero. And for me to be senior engineer in five years or whatever, I'm going to have to put in more work than I put in to get here. And that's when I realized, yo, is this thing, is this really where I want to be? Mm. Like, I, can I, can I continue working at that high drive for the next five years for the rest of my career? You know what I mean? To be yeah. able to produce and the results for me to be able to be a senior engineer. And that's when it hit me and I was like, man, uh, like I started, I looked at the feet, I looked at the history and I looked at the past. So I looked at the past and I looked at the future. And that's when I really started questioning. And we don't, people don't talk about that part. Like I started posting more about when you first land a job. And mm. that's when I actually started appreciating how long it took for me to get the job. Because I really started thinking if I got the job earlier and I wasn't prepared, I maybe would have got fired the first 
two months. <laughs> you know what I mean? I very mean, maybe you know what I mean. So it's like you. I appreciated how long it took because even when I got there, I still I realized I still didn't know anything. Yeah. Nobody told me about this, right? Everybody say, "Hey, land a job. You're gonna get a bunch of money." But then when you get there, what the heck do you do? <laughs> So like it's not all perfect and glamour and trying to get there. And when you get there, you've reached the promised land. Like mm-hmm. the challenges just moves like moves to a new level, right? You just continue moving to what's yeah. next. Yeah, like that's that's it. No, definitely. Yeah, I, I I feel you on that. I think I had a little bit of different realization once I started in tech support. Given like my 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 story is you know bit different is for me i was like hey i was earning ten dollars at a gas station this job is paying me very well mm-hmm. i'm just gonna keep doing it yeah. until i get better at it <laughs> you know because you you'll you'll always have that imposter syndrome especially mm-hmm. when you're early in your career because you, you mm-hmm. don't have that confidence build up because you don't have the skills yet right once you build those i think and i think that's what the company also saw in me is like you learn it, yeah. it it doesn't matter you don't know a to z or a to z right mm-hmm. you learn on the job as you go but they see that do you have that motivation to learn new things mm-hmm. and you know i think that's one thing you need to have in tech which will help you yeah, yeah after a year i realized i'm like so there are you know how there are tiers in in support mm-hmm. right if you're working customer support there are different tiers where tickets get escalated so i was yeah. working tier 1 after my probation or so they like uh no yeah it took me six months they made me tier two and then only tier three was left for me and i'm like i don't want to do tech support for my entire life (laughs) yeah Um, and that's when i'm like oh let's let's you know navigate and i started Mm -hmm. seeing software devs and cloud people and stuff but I, i get the feeling that you get in the beginning and also the point that it's not being shared um yeah that you might wow. hit this you know you might start thinking about this stuff once you are actually in tech yeah. um the other thing i don't like is you won't make six figures right out of yes the first job. oh my god what yes i was trying i was many stuff i'm trying to talk about yes like i see so many people who go through boot camps mm. right promise a certain amount of money. And once they finish, once they graduate, they get offered a job, but it's maybe like 70 K. Yeah. They don't want to take it. I'm just like, but then I get, it's not like they get other, other roles. Of like, 100, yeah, yeah. like they struggle to get this one, but they're like, nah, like this isn't worth like people are getting 110. I'm like, you know, you don't have any experience, right? And you know, you don't even necessarily have to like stay at the job for the rest of your career. Like, dude, you need to get your foot in the door. And if mm-hmm. they're giving it to you, you need to do it. Because guess what? I was telling people this. As someone transition, especially if you transition from another career and you don't have any experience, you're basically begging for a job and asking a company to take a chance on you. Yeah. That's that's literally what you're doing, right? You're telling the company, please, please, based off of this is what I've done please take a chance on me on my potential, right? Mm-hmm. So you're not going to get a lot of companies that's willing to, to take that take risk a yeah. chance and take that risk, mm-hmm. especially for that amount of money. So yep. like people, oh my gosh, like it irks <laughs> me. Like I've seen people tell no, say no, and then they don't have a job for the next eight months. I'm like, mm-hmm. what are you doing? Yeah, we need to be more real as 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 whatever the term is now, tech influencers or yeah, okay. um, sharing content people. <laughs> awesome. Okay, I've just got a few rapid questions for you. Um, this is just a segment I do with every guest. Yeah. What is your go-to operating system? Are you a Windows person, Mac OS? Or Linux. I, by the way, I know what you prefer. It's for the audience. <laughs> I follow you on Instagram, so <laughs> definitely, definitely Mac, man. Definitely Mac. Um, I remember my first MacBook was when my parents got it for me freshman year in college, and that thing lasted 
I actually still have it and it still works. And like when I got the first one after like four or five years and it was still working, I was like, yeah, that's like, I'm not changing this, this computer for nothing. And then I put my whole ecosystem, iPhone and stuff around you. Yep. Cause I had windows before and I was like, this is the best thing ever. Like I'm not changing <laughs> it. And now I have like this huge Mac studio that's powerful and doing yeah. a bunch of stuff for me. <laughs> nice. Nice. No, I, th- I I do think they last way longer than Windows systems. I don't know why though, because I, I think that's what made me shift. So like for, <laughs> for portable things, yeah. I'm all Apple, mm-hmm. iPad, you know, MacBook. It's it's great, especially with their M1, M2 stuff. Yeah. Um, but I still use and love my Windows PC. And what is your favorite programming language favorite is definitely python 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 i've had exposure to um javascript java c plus and c obviously i hate those (laughs) but (laughs) python is just oh my god python is just beautiful like to me it's just so beautiful right and yeah that's where i go to right now (laughs) nice nice do you have a preference on cloud provider or not yet uh the a- AWS man, AWS. Like I, my mind was made up on AWS from the time when I was taking the fundamental uh, mm. um, certifications because nice. I knew I was going to AWS, but I wanted exposure in Azure and AWS. I started with Azure fundamentals, passed that, threw it away, and said, "Okay, I'm going to focus on AWS." <laughs> You're a beast. <laughs> That's. I would not recommend doing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But the knowledge now, shares. If, if anyone asks me anything by Azure, at least I have just a little, 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 little bit of fundamental understanding. Oh, no, definitely. I am saying that you're a beast of doing that. Like the amount of knowledge shift you need in the beginning yeah. once oh, you're figuring gosh. out, like, oh, what is this cloud thing I can rent? EC2 instances, and then all of a sudden you see Azure VM. <laughs> exactly. It makes sense once you you know everything. You yeah. know, yeah. you know it's at, at the end of the day, it's a service. They name it differently, and things look mm-hmm. different. But underneath, they all work the same. At that point, yes, shift cloud providers, you will be fine. But in the beginning, yeah, nah, I don't recommend it either. <laughs> because <laughs> I went through it, but it was uh, it was a lot. I was like. I mean, I could draw some similarities, but I realized that it, it's just, just the way they name their services. Yep. I was like, oh my gosh, this is insane. <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool. Well, it was it was great having you. Um, I had fun, uh, just like we did <laughs> last, last time <laughs> chatting. Here, um, mm-hmm. You had a phenomenal journey, and I, I'll be looking forward to, you know, your, your LinkedIn post your tweets to see what you're building and um what you're up to um and you inspire a lot of us so what would be one last tip for the listeners or any famous quotes that you you know live by that you want to share most of my audience most of the people who i like to resonate with is like people who trying to get follow what i did or whatever right Um, i would say that a lot of times when you're trying to do something that's not been done by anybody else, people think you're crazy. But as long as you believe and you have faith, I would say go for it and continue going for it and shooting for that dream. Relent, like you have to be relentless, right? Because you're going to be hit with a bunch of barriers. You're going to be hit with a lot of obstacles. But as long as you believe and you have faith, I think you can accomplish almost anything, right? And that's what I held there to me. And that's how I am today. And that's how I got to where I am today. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. No, that's, that's a great, that's a great takeaway. Well, yeah. thank you for your time. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, hopefully we, we do this in a few years when you have yeah. progressed more uh, <laughs> and have a different role. Um, but yeah, uh, no, thank you for sure, your time. Man. For sure. Um, the last thing I would say, yeah, you, I do my entire career, like journey. Like two, there's like three prevalent people I was just following and watching videos and like you definitely and um, and Gwen are like the two people who I watched, like binge watched all the videos 
everything you guys did. Learn to cloud, of course. So it's like it's so crazy. Like you know when like you guys were like my superheroes when I was when I was going oh through my journey. Like it's crazy. So like even to be talking to you right now, like on a level and just like respect and and then last week when I was talking with um, Gwen, it's like it's really insane. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, shout out, shout too, out, man. Gwen. Shout out to Learn hey, to yeah. Cloud. But yeah, we. I don't know. I don't know what to say, but thank you. Um, <laughs> no, for sure. We're just we're just here to you know, we just to we we started this because we are here to help. We are here to cheer and congratulate you on all the successes that you'll have. Yeah. And I, I'm I'm betting on you'll have more. Uh, but yeah, we'll be here on the sidelines. Hey, for sure, man. Thanks for having me, man. Cheers. <laughs>